Fine, you won't. All right. <laughs> I'd like to call this meeting to order. Uh, first order of business is the consent agenda. Uh, you have before you the consent agenda for your review. Move, Move consent agenda. Second. Okay, we'll move to a vote. All in favor uh, by roll call, please. Brown. Aye. Lars. Aye. Shane. Aye. Curtis. Aye. 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 Uh, we have before us a request uh, from the uh, collective bargaining committee to review a proposed uh, settlement with the uh, uh, firefighter I, I, before association. Before we do that, I want to go back to the consent agenda and pull an item. Okay, we have an item we'd like to reconsider. To, uh, entertain a motion to reconsider. I'd like to pull item number eleven. Uh, point First of order: point. How could you move to reconsider when she voted? Well, she voted in favor of the motion. Yes. I beg your pardon. As long as she yes. She's on the prevailing so. side. I'll we'll second. Have a motion to reconsider, please. I'll second. She moved. I second. Um, and all in favor of reconsidering? Aye. Opposed. Okay, now we'll reconsider uh, items on the agenda, consent agenda. Is there an item you'd like yeah, to have pulled for specific discussion? Well, number 11, I just wanted to know on the electric tie line project if, uh, if that bound us to the project. This is an How about approval. that, Mr. This City is Manager? An approval. Did that, this uh, is an approval of the contract. It means we can vote later on about this. I think that was my understanding okay. at that point. That's just wanted to check on that. Thank you. You wanted did to know if we were tied to the tie line? Right. <laughs> <laughs> did we were tied item? to the tie line. All right, I move the item. Uh, move item, item number 11, roll call vote. Second. Roll call vote. Parks. Aye. Shank. Aye. Curtis. Aye. Thurston. Aye. Campbell. Aye. Brown. Aye. Got to entertain a motion to go into closed session for the purposes of, of uh, reviewing a collective bargaining agreement with the International Association of Firefighters, local number 625. Move uh, closed session as provided by section 2017-3, Code of Iowa. Second. Okay, this will require a roll call vote, unanimous vote. Curtis. Aye. 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 We'll move into closed session. Yeah, I'll entertain a motion to uh, go back into open session. Move to go back in open session. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Okay, you have before you a resolution ratifying the agreement with the International Association of Firefighters, Local 625. Move the resolution ratifying the agreement. Second. Any discussion? Well, I think that uh, we were very generous, but I don't see where we had any... Uh, I don't either. I think 1% is fair. Uh, any option. Okay. Any further discussion? We'll move to a vote. All a roll call, please. Thurston. Aye. Campbell. Aye. Brown. Aye. Parks. Aye. Shanks. Aye. Okay, next item of business is a public forum. Uh, this is time we set aside for those members of the community who would like to speak before us on an item not on the agenda. Is anyone in the audience uh, that would like to speak on an item that is not on the agenda? If you'll please come forward, state your name and address for the record, please. Public forum. Yes, well, thank sir. Thank you. Yes, well, my name is Bob Kinder. I live at 609 Garden Road. And I'm here again tonight, as you know, representing the Ames Games with the uh, Iowa Games and et cetera. Well, we're, we're happy for the support you've given so far in the past to the Ames Games. And as you know, they're coming up tomorrow. Now, we were here about three weeks ago for our fireworks permit and appreciate your uh, offer there if we needed anything else to come on back. And that's what we're doing because, well, frankly, as you probably read in the paper, we're about $1,000 short of our uh, fundraising drive to come up with the money for the fireworks display. And uh, you're probably aware that we have about 5,000 people are going to be in Banshell Park tomorrow night looking forward to those fireworks. Uh, unfortunately, we need to come and ask you right now at this time for about $1,000 because we've got the fireworks purchased. They're in the warehouse. We're all set to set them off, but we don't have any insurance yet. And uh, as you know, on that fireworks permit, you said we had to get our insurance or else it was no go. So we're here tonight to ask you if you just kindly uh, oblige us and make the contribution of about a thousand dollars so we can go ahead with the fireworks for the Ames Games tomorrow night. Well, Mr. Kendrick, I'm sorry, but uh, unfortunately we cannot take action on your request. Uh, it was not something that we had posted as advance notice. Uh, 
And under the Iowa meetings, uh, open meetings law, we have to give the public who might be uh, opposed to your proposal uh, an opportunity to speak on that particular matter. We have to give them at least 24 hours notice. Well, so unless the council wants to put this on for a later item an agenda in the future or have a special meeting uh, tomorrow on this particular item, uh, I'm afraid we will not be able to take any action. I got this letter from the city. Um, my name is Fern Agnes, and I am just a resident, and I live at 1531 Harding. And uh, a letter was mailed to me on the 25th of February for snow removal at a property that I own on 1229 Shoal Road. Uh, the snow for the removal was for December 12th, 1986. When I rent this property, the tenant signs a lease that he or they are responsible for the snow removal. They probably, and I guess they got a notice, but it wasn't sent to me. Two months later, I got this notice for the snow removal. Two months is a long time to get a letter for the snow removal. Uh, at that time, those people have moved out. There's no way for me. They've got their deposit back. I cannot, uh, I'm going to pay for their snow removal if I do myself. Furthermore, this is a duplex and I called uh, the people living on the other side of the duplex and asked them if they had done their snow removal at this particular time and they said they did their snow removal every time. So they are complaining about half of a piece of property at the amount of $57.60 and it can be hired done if I'm aware of it for $5. I've done it myself. Furthermore, uh, I have lived at my residence for a number of years and it's been necessary for me to go to work at 3.30 in the afternoon. I've got up and shoveled the snow according to the laws and removed the snow many, many times. And when I get ready to go to work, I've been shoveled in by the city of Ames. I live on the corner of 15th and the Harding, right across, right where the snow comes from 16th Street, shoveled in a double drive and the snow plow comes down around the corner and I get snowed in again on Harding Street. I've had the neighbors come and dig me out many times so I could go to work. Two years ago, I have records showing that I have been to a doctor with a bad back shoveling out the snow that the city has poured in for me. I've put up with this for years and years and you have the nerve to send a letter like this due to this code that you're using is very unfair, very unjustifiable in anybody's words. Thank you. We'll see what the council wants to do. Anyone else want to speak? The notice is a courtesy notice which we put on the door. And we put it on the door. I'm talking about the billing. 24 hours. I'm not okay. talking about the notice. The, I'm talking about the billing for it. Came the to billing. Me. That's what yeah. concerns me because the person's moved out and she can't take it out okay. of the deposit. The billing went to the the uh, to the address, which is where the rental property is. And but, uh, that, that, but you're charging the owner, not the people at the address. So why is it going to the address? Well, it went to the address because There's a we use the uh, we use the. Uh, Assessor's records. Uh, How can you get inspection? Well, we feel that we should use the same as the ones that are used in the tax statements. There's uh, a problem. The we do we do have a problem in that the uh, the record that we got was the uh, was the incorrect uh, record in that it was not the mailing address; it was the property address. Back to my computer. The, the, uh, and then after <clears throat> after about two months is when it's turned over then to the city clerk's office. Unfortunately, 
the city has the responsibility, as does the property owner, uh, under tort laws for injuries caused because of un, un uh, clean or un uh, shoveled walks. So the reason we have the ordinance as we do is to make sure that people do make some effort to shovel them. If in fact uh, that person does slide on the ice and injure themselves, uh, invariably we end up with the ones that have the responsibility for paying that. Uh, and that's unfortunate because we're not in any more control of the property than you are in that situation. But that's not what the public expects. And so we have to enforce the ordinance. Uh, what I would like to see done in this particular case is to see if, in fact, we do have records available that shows that uh, Miss Agnes does own this property at 1531, or pardon me, 1229 Shoal. Right. If we had that available at the time when we sent out the notice on the uh, uh, delinquency, uh, then I think our system probably is not what it should be. If, in fact, it is not uh, a property that has had a letter of compliance and has been inspected under the rental housing ordinance, uh, then I'll have a different attitude towards uh, whether, in fact, this property should be assessed. I think we have to have some coordination between our rental housing records. I think we ought to table this one until we have a report from the staff to see if, in fact, this property is subject to the rental housing ordinance, and, that, and we do have a <coughs> compliance letter uh, listing who the owner of the property is through that particular system. And uh, if we don't, then uh, I think that's the risk the person takes uh, in terms of owning the property. Second. Wait. I declare the hearing closed. Now I'll go ahead and move the. I would move uh, we table the uh, matter on Ms. Agnes uh, with approval of the assessments and all the other properties. Second. Clerk, call the roll. Aye. 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 Aye.
The council is only here this evening to listen to whatever input uh, anyone would like to make. After my opening statement and then the uh, suggestions and presentations from the general public, which will be taken hopefully, as I said, at four minute intervals, the third part is the selection of the Chamber of Commerce Study and Hearing Commission, which Bob Parks has uh, told the Chamber that uh, he would serve as chairman. So with that as kind of some opening comments, I'd like to give my opening statement. State your name and the address for the record, please. I didn't expect that. Okay. <laughs> Paul Goodland, 2331 Donald. The reason I've moved down to the mic instead of sitting in the usual spot, two reasons. One, I can talk better when I'm on my feet. I used to do that at Iowa Law School, and I can certainly do it better still. And second is that I want to be representative as the fact that you're Council is not only elected officials, but they are also citizens of the community. And I think we often forget that as well as being elected officials to serve the community, we are also citizens of the community. A month ago last night, we held a meeting. The meeting was held open to the public, announced you all received individual letters <laughs> inviting you to the meeting. It was at the Ames Public Library Auditorium. And as a result of that meeting, attended by more than 40 persons, um, members of the public, uh, we formed a sort of informal organization. We call ourselves uh, uh, Citizens for Central City Hall, slash. And we presented at that time uh, the form of a petition, which was unanimously adopted by the meeting that night. And uh, since that time, uh, members of the community have been invited to sign the petition. and. Uh, I would like to just read the text of the petition, what it says, what it was that people were signing. To the mayor of Ames and members of the Ames City Council, petition. We the undersigned, being citizens of Ames, Story County, Iowa, hereby petition the mayor and the members of the Ames City Council to request that the following actions be taken. One, submit to the voters for their approval a general obligation bond issue in an amount not exceeding four million dollars and two if said bond issue is approved use the proceeds therefrom to acquire title to the central junior high school property from the ames community school district and to remodel said property for use as a city administration building with the auditorium to become a municipal auditorium and the gymnasium to become a municipal gymnasium and with office space not needed for municipal purposes to be made available for the use of city and county human service agencies on reasonable terms. That was the text of the petition to which we went to the public, uh, with which we went to the public a month ago. And I'm prepared to announce tonight, in fact, I have the original signed petitions and um, as of late this afternoon, uh, as of the time we reproduced the last ones. We have here petitions, signatures collected from 1,529 residents of Ames, or as you'll notice, the vicinity. We've got a few people from rural areas that aren't in the, in the community. But 1,529 signatures, and Mr. Mayor, that represents 69.5% of the number of voters who voted in the last Ames municipal election held in November of 1985. That was about 2,200 votes. So 1,529 signatures uh, is 69.5%. And I would note that it takes 60% uh, of those going to the polls to uh, pass a general obligation bond issue. Um, I will return to the podium later when I have an opportunity, if I have an opportunity, to give you an idea of, of uh, how we arrived at the cost figures, it wasn't just something taken out of the air, things of that sort, but at this time, all I will do is file with the city clerk uh, 
obviously for transmission to the mayor, and members of the city council, these copies of these petitions, and this I would say uh, is the first installment because we intend to continue collecting these petitions. Um, they, among other things, serve as our voting list because uh, we had people put down their telephone numbers, which they did in most cases, and we are prepared to take the responsibility of getting people to the polls and getting them to vote for this proposal. So without further ado, I file this, and I would like to uh, return later and talk some more. I think we need to not lose sight of the fact that the city has certain requirements. They have certain departments that have certain needs, special needs that are required by law, like police and so forth. And I think we can't lose sight of that in our discussions with as to what's going to happen, where, or where you put what. And I want people to remember that there is a study on file that talks about the needs of the city and defines them, and we shouldn't forget it.